Hey, welcome to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Schell. Today's video, three-way rig. Uh, I have probably the most frequent comment I get in my videos is if people asking me about the three-way rig that I'm using uh, a lot of times when I'm trolling. Uh, so I'm going to go over uh, how to make the rig and some tips and tricks, you know, and using it, you know, when to use it, you know, and what not to use it, etc. Uh, we'll, we'll make one here, but I'm just going to show you real quick. Of course, we have a three-way swivel here. Uh, this hooks to our line via a snap, and then on a shorter line here, we just have a snap. Depending what size crate bait you're running, um, it's either going to be a size two or three snap. And then you got a longer trailer that uh, I use a single hook and put a twister tail on there. And uh, purpose of using the three way is to uh, get a smaller bait in the water. Uh, some species like crappie, white bass, and smallmouth bass. Uh, quite often uh, the, the larger crankbait you're using, it, it could be too large for them and uh, you got a smaller profile here and they'll hit it. Uh, and uh, if you're fishing really deep water uh, for those fish, uh, you, you're going to be using a pretty large size crankbait that's going to be too big uh, in some cases for smallmouth uh, white bass. Um, so then you want to use the bigger crankbait to give you your depth control, and then you got the little trailer going over here to catch them. Um, but let's go over making them here. Um, all right, I typically use 50 pound test monofilament line. A uh, couple of reasons for this: number one, it's a very cheap line and very sturdy line, very tough line. You can buy this buy this line uh, at Pretty much any Walmart, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, any sporting goods store is probably going to have it. Uh, this is Zipco brand. I w this is usually no more than $10 for a spool. And while I'm talking about it here, I've got another spool here that has an 80-pound line. I believe I bought this at Cabela's a few years ago. It's 330 yards, and I think I paid $10 for this, $9.95 for this. This monofilament and his big spools is dirt cheap. Uh, well, I've got this 80 pound here. What I use this 80 pound for, uh, if I'm fishing a lake and I'm primarily going after uh, the two of the critters, like the northern pike and the muskies, I'm using this for leader material. Uh, I've tried using many different kinds of leader materials. I bought the store brand leader materials when I first started fishing for muskies and northerns. They're just not durable. They don't last very long. I was making my own out of wire. They weren't bad, but it takes quite a while to make them. I even use titanium uh, wire making them, but it's, it's, you know, other than pretty expensive and time consuming. I find out in my personal experience, using 80 pound monofilament line is excellent for making leaders for uh, if you're muskie fishing or uh, northern pike fishing. It's super cheap. This line is super tough. It costs you hardly nothing to make these leaders. I pre-make them ahead of time, a snap and a uh, you know, uh, tie a swivel on the other end, but uh, you want leaders for muskies or northerns, use this 80 or even 100 pound, or you can even get away, a lot of times I use the 50 pound, but uh, this stuff is tough, and uh, they have a hard time, I, I've never lost a fish, and I know several other people, structure fishermen that use this, that fish exclusively for muskies and northerns, and I don't think they've ever lost a fish biting through this line here, so little tip on making a leader for muskies and northerns, but let's get back into making the three-way. I'm just going to make one here for you real quick just to show you how easy it is. I've got the three-way swivels here. You can get them anywhere. I think I actually got these at uh, Walmart today. I looked and didn't think I had any. Then when I got home, got everything together, then I found I had them. So anyway, three-way swivel. Let me get these things open. Okay, I've got my three-way, I've got my 50-pound monofilament line here, super tough line, like I said, inexpensive. It's, I use it for all my three-way stuff here, so let me just get a fresh cut here. All right, now when you're out, usually I'm making these on the water, and you know, there's no set dimensions. You usually want a 2 to 1, 3 to 1 ratio. That means, so if, if, if my trailer here, where's the one I got made here? Uh, so I, you want almost like a 3 to 1 ratio, which meaning 
my dropper going to my crank bed here. If this is one foot, you want the trailer to be two and a half to three foot. So you want about a two and a half to three, the, the three ratio of the trailer being longer than the dropper going to the crank bed here. So what, how I do it, and it works out pretty good for me, I just hold in my hand and I just take it right, right about my elbow right there, boom. And I cut that, and that's the, about the length I use for the uh, shorter piece going to the crankbait. So just tie it on one of the three ways here, and I just use a simple trilene that they've never, I don't think I've ever had a trilene that fail me. Everyone I'm sure here knows how to make a simple trilene that. So let's get, get the short line tied. Now on the other half here, this is going to my crankbait. So I'm going to stick a uh, snap on here and I usually make a few of these at a time not knowing if I'm going to be using these shallow or deep meaning a smaller crankbait or a larger crankbait I'll make a couple of them that uh, uh, a small snap and larger snap so I, you know if I want to depending on the size crankbait I'm using here I think this is a number two snap I think Number four, it says here. This will get, you'll use this one most of the time. Unless you're trolling with a really big crankbait. Then you want a larger snap. Alright, so I've got half of it made. Got my snap here. Now for the trailer. And how I typically measure that is I hold it in my hand and I'll stretch it out. Until it hit about my other shoulder here, about right here. So from the end of my hand out to about here, and that's usually going to be around three feet or here, three feet or so. So I'm going to cut that in. This is what I'm using for the trailer. Tie this real quick. line off over here. All right, now you can. I typically just put a single hook on here. Years ago, when I, you know, like many many years ago, when I first started using these, I did was experimenting. I first tried just tying a regular like a eighth ounce or quarter ounce jig head. Thought, well, that's not working good. It's sinking. Then I tried using a floating jig head, and it just didn't seem to run right. And then I just had the idea, like, well, why do I even need a, some kind of jig head? Let me just go with a plain single hook. So that's what I use, and I find this to work the best. So just a regular hook. I, let me see, this is a 2-watt hook. You can go a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Depends what kind of fish I'm catching. Uh, but this 2-watt hook will usually get, is good enough for uh, white bass, smallmouth bass and uh, I've caught many crappie as well. A lot of people think that crappie is a slow fish but boy they get really active. I tell you how many times I've been surprised catching a crappie on the uh, on this uh, twister when I'm fishing. So let's do that. Now a little tip here. My tagline here on the hook I don't want to cut it completely off. This is something I learned throughout the years. You want to just leave maybe a little bit of, uh, between an eighth and a quarter inch or so, just a little bit there. You want to leave it there, and I'm going to explain that in a second. So you want to have a little bit of a tag line sticking up there. And what that's going to do is keep your plastic. Now I typically use a uh, either a four or five inch twister. Uh, use it for Cabela's. This one's labeled four inches and this one's labeled as five inches but I bought the fours and fives compared and they looked identical to me but anyway so with the twister the reason I keep that little tag on there is when I push the twister on there I push it past the tag and pull it and that the, the tag line here locks the plastic in there from coming out so it acts like a little catch for it a little stopper for it so I'll just 
push the plastic till I get to the tail. And you, and you, you just push it past the eye of the hook, up past the tag line, and then back a little bit, and it's like it locks the plastic in there, so you don't have to worry about the, the plastic will last you a lot longer on here. So there we go, we just made the three-way there. Nothing fancy. Now, now some tips or experiences on, on using a three-way. Um, like I said, it, you got to know when to use it and there's times not to use it. Uh, if you got a really snaggy lake, like for example, I fish peat in the wall uh, flowage quite often, and I'm not using a three-way out there. It's just going to get snag after snag. Yeah, so you got a lake with a lot of snags. Three ways not going to uh, do very well for you out there. And then in the case of uh, white bass, hybrid bass, or even pure stripers, uh, there's times I'm out there and they're, they're, all they're doing is slamming a twister tail. They're hardly hitting the crankbait I had on here. Uh, I think the first time uh, Case and I fished Old Dickory Lake were catching stripers. I want to say probably five out of six stripers uh, we caught out there all came on a twister tail. And um, I've had just the opposite. We went to DeGray Lake uh, in Arkansas, uh, hybrid stripers. And we were fishing a three-way, and every single one of them came on the crankbait, even though that twister was there. So, you know, if I'm not catching fish on the twister, and I'm ca consistently catching fish on the crankbait, I'll take it off, I'll put it away. I mean, why bother using it? Um, but... There are some cases where you'll find that the fish are hitting it. Uh, another example is on Lake Mendota. Fish that quite often. And I'm fishing, usually if I'm fishing a summer pattern for northern pike, I'm fishing down, you know, anywhere from 18 to 28 feet deep. So I'm definitely using a twister out there. Not for the northerns. Matter of fact, I bet you 9 out of every 10 northerns, it's actually higher than that, they almost come all exclusively on the crankbait, even though that twister is there. Uh, Rarely, this might, may, may have happened to me once or twice where I caught the northern on a twister, but, but probably like 97% of the time they're going to hit the crankbait. But I'll use it because when I'm fishing that deep out there, you'll be surprised how many white bass and smallmouth bass you'll pick up using a twister out there on uh, Mendota. Uh, Shelbyville is another lake I fish quite a bit, and the three-way comes in quite handy over there. Um, surprisingly for crappies. Uh, a lot of people think crappie's a slow fish, but, you know, you get the right conditions, those, those fish are active. I, I've caught numerous amount of crappies. Now, I wouldn't specifically target crappies trolling with three-way. The speed's generally going to be a little bit too fast, but you'll be surprised how many crappies you'll put in the boat uh, with this three-way as well, too. Uh, another place that I fish quite a bit with a three-way is a uh, lake not far from me, a cooling lake called Braidwood Lake. It's got a, well, it used to have a really good population of hybrid stripers. It's down, but they're coming back. But when the population was good, we shouldn't have hybrid stripers. But the catfish, a lot of people think catfish is a slow-moving bottom feeder. Oh, they're, I, I think I probably caught catfish at a speed faster than uh, than any other fish I've caught. I mean, I probably had, at times, at Braidwood, was going six, seven miles an hour trolling. And uh, catfish were just slamming it. And you got to let the fish tell you what they want. There's been several trips out there at Braidwood Lake where I was fishing with a three-way, and nine out of ten catfish will come on a twister tail. And then I went out, go out there uh, the, my next trip, and nine out of ten fish come on the crankbait. Um, I don't know if it's just the, the size profile that they're more aggressive and they're hitting the crankbait, uh, but in that case where I'm catching fish almost exclusively on the crankbait, you know, I'll take the three-way off. You know, a lot of times it could be a nuisance and just uh, uh, fish the crankbait only. But um, quite often, though, this three-way will put a lot of additional fish in the boat for you. And like I say, they're pretty easy to make. Oh, one last thing here. Got it right in front of me. I almost forgot about it. How to store these things. I go out. This thing is called a Tackle Buddy. You can probably you can find them at Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, order them online. Just look up Tackle Buddy and you'll find them. And it's a, a soft plastic here, and this is what I use to store them. You can see I've got one on there already. And it's got like a little hook catch on here. What I do is just uh, put the snap hooked on there and then just wrap this around. And just keep on wrapping it until you get to the hook. And then this is a soft 
rubber here and I just pull a little tight and just push the hook down into it and boom, I'm set. You know, a lot of times I'll make six, seven, eight, I'll fold this whole thing up with three ways so I've got them ready to go. But this, I definitely recommend you get one of these. And then what you can also do is, it's hollow on the inside here, you can store all, everything you need inside here. You can uh, put your snaps in here, put your three ways in here, and you can put your hooks in here. You put all your terminal tackle in here and keep it. You got everything you need in here. Great little thing. Um, well, that's it. I've had a lot of questions on the three ways, so I hope uh, I've answered them all here. Um, another quick thing while I'm thinking about it, uh, I, you could, the only two places that you cannot use a three-way, I believe the state of Minnesota, you're limited to one hook or one lure per line. This is considered, I guess, having two line or two hooks, two lures on one line, so I don't believe you can use this in Minnesota, and in Canada um, is the same rule, I believe. You're allowed one hook per line, so you cannot use this in can Canada or in Minnesota. The only exception might be Boundary Waters in uh, Minnesota in uh, port, the Great Lakes portion of Canada. They have different regulations. You probably use it out there. Oh, oh one other thing where I'm just going to remind too here. Uh, some guys, I know, if I was fishing the Great Lakes a lot, which I occasionally do, you know, for uh, the trout and the salmon, um, instead of putting this hook on here, I'll tie a, uh, a, a, a snap swivel and I'll have a, a spoon on here for a trailer. Um, and that would be work great in Lake Michigan. You got your crankbait going down there, and you got a spoon flashing over there. Um, so uh, you could use a instead of putting the hook on here, just uh, put a snap swivel, and then uh, when you take it out, just clip on a spoon out there, and you have a spoon out there as well too. So, all right. Hope that answers a lot of questions that a lot of you had on a three-way rig, and uh, go out there and get them. Thanks for watching.